No, it was not your eyes deceiving you. You were not hallucinating. We may actually have some Wheel of Time news to talk about today. So we have an interview with Marcus Rutherford, the actor who plays Perrin. We have that to talk about. We've got a director coming back for season three, along with some more season three news and some more clues as to when season two might be coming out. Stay tuned. So before we dive headfirst into the Wheel of Time news, please go ahead and smash that like button. That is the best way to help other people see these videos. You all are the best, but only if you hit the like button. And as always, pay attention right here for any indications on spoilers. So Marcus Rutherford, the actor playing Perrin Abara on the show, gave an interview to a local publication in Nottingham, that's where he's from by the way, in the UK. Now I'll have the article linked in the description of this video. Make sure to read the whole thing as I'm only gonna cover a few parts of it, but the rest of the article is actually pretty interesting. It covers some of his history as an actor and how he got into the Wheel of Time. But the thing I wanna cover here are the things that he said about the Wheel of Time. Now in the article, Marcus says, it was really interesting to play a character who's a lot more reserved, quite quiet in his show of this scale. A lot of the other characters are more confident, whereas his development is a bit slower, which I think is quite rewarding for the audience to see. It takes him a bit of time to come into his own, but he grows a lot in the first series and will do so even more in the second. Now, I think you could say this echoes what we've seen in the TV series so far, but I would argue that it is not so much what we see on the books at this point. Perrin receives about the second most development of any character in the books by this point in the story, which is roughly about the Great Hunt. He also wasn't dealing with any of the trauma of killing his wife in the books. So we didn't get much of anything with the wolves in season one, just a few tidbits here and there. So I'm hoping that that means in season two that we're gonna be getting a lot more of that storyline. He also mentioned in this article that there will be a time jump between season one and season two, which I think we all were kind of expecting. The implication here is that the characters will have plausible reasons to be somewhat more developed at the start of the season. Marcus also said that the characters and the season in general will be darker, more real, and more brutal, which I have no idea if we'll get that to the level that I wanna see it, but that's at least good to hear. I think they could have stepped up the realism and maybe the grittiness of the first season, not to like Game of Thrones scales, but they could have, you know, gone a little higher with that. Marcus said that the characters are growing up and that their innocence is gone. Now this reflects the books, but I hope we get to see a lot more of this on screen. I think the characters accepting who they are and taking control of situations is one of the more fun parts to watch early in the books. Just my thoughts. Speaking of season two and of Perrin, there is an unconfirmed leak that Fael will be a part of season two, making her first appearance in season two rather than season three. Now this comes courtesy of What Up. I'll leave the link to his video in the description of this video, but he is saying that a source from the show told him that Fael will be making her first appearance in the next season of the show. Now there was nothing about whether Perrin and Fael would meet, whether their relationship would begin, just simply that she would be a part of the season. Now keep in mind, this is unconfirmed, so take all of it with a grain of salt, but we had been previously told by Rafe that Fael would absolutely be a part of the show, and there was a strong implication that she would be a part of season three, where I know they're gonna be spending more time in things like the Battle of the Two Rivers, where Fael takes a part. Also in the Comic-Con panel, which occurred after season two finished filming, Marcus Rutherford did not seem to know much about who Fayo was as a character or as his love interest. Rafe kind of had to chime in there. So these would seem to go against the rumor that Fayel is in season two, but John at What Up is very confident and he has been right about these things before. He very much trusts the source he got this from. So let me know in the comments of the video what you think of Fayel potentially being a part of season two and how you think she might be introduced if she is. Do you want to see her and parents start their thing here? Let me know. Next up, we've got a returning director for season two of The Wheel of Time. Season three is about to begin filming, likely sometime in the next two months. So it appears directors are being lined up for the various episodes. Whatseries.com, my favorite Wheel of Time news source, is reporting that Kieran Donnelly is returning to direct Amazon's Wheel of Time in season three. 
He is also listed as an executive producer for the season, and while there is not an indication of which episodes he would be directing, or even how many of them, this is not his first rodeo with The Wheel of Time. Kieran Donnelly is a decorated, BAFTA-winning director who is widely respected in the industry. In a vacuum, I'd say this would be lauded as a great hire, but he comes with the background of having directed the last two episodes of Wheel of Time Season 1, which saw a very divided response, I'd say that's generous, among the fan base, specifically in regard to the season finale. So a couple things to keep in mind here. First, he was responsible for directing the incredible Episode 7 Cold Open, which shows Shail fighting while giving birth and her meeting Tam. But Episode 8 was considered by most, myself included, to be the worst of the season. But it is very, very much worth noting that there was quite a bit of turmoil going on around that time. He didn't exactly have an easy go at it. They had lost an actor, they were locked out of a number of filming locations that they had previously intended to film in, and they were limited in the number of extras they could bring on the set. There are mock-ups of what they had intended that last battle to be that were nothing near what it ended up with. Not to mention the CGI was rushed, and that isn't his fault. So despite episode 8 clearly not being good in my opinion at least, I'm willing to give him another shot because he has a pedigree in his other work, and he was responsible for one of the best shots of last season, in my opinion, with the episode 7 cold open. What are your thoughts on Kieran Donnelly returning as a director in season 3? Let me know in the comments. Now, before we talk more about season 3, let me throw out a massive thank you to the video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the number one provider of VPN services in the world. You might be asking yourself, what the f is a VPN and why do I want one? Well, if you don't get one, you will have bad luck forever and everybody will be mean to you for the rest of your life. Okay, maybe not that, but you will be unprotected on the internet. See, what a VPN does is it acts as a third party between you and your internet service provider. What that means for you is that they can't see where you go and they can't track your browsing history. Did you know that your service provider does that? Third parties can't hack you while you're in public places like airports, hotels, or anywhere else with public Wi-Fi. You can also watch TVs and movies from other parts of the world because a VPN allows you to log in as though you're in another country. So click the link in the description of the video and get yourself a deal on NordVPN's already cheap service. Protect yourself online and you also support the channel by doing so. Thank you to NordVPN and let's get back to the video. So as many of you know, season three was picked up by Amazon a while back, and the production team and the Wheel of Time writers have been hard at work writing season three of the show. The writer's room for season three has taken place in London, and Sarah Nakamura, the huge Wheel of Time fan and book expert for the show, actually moved to London for this reason. She recently tweeted out the following on Twitter about the show and the writer's room. The last five months in London creating season three have been magic. I spent more time than ever in the writer's room for the daunting and exciting process of framing out each episode. I'm grateful that this crew was so open to my in-the-moment reactions and feedback. The creative process is precious. I was given the space to engage in a way where no one worried about saying something out of pocket to the expert, I'd say a big fan, and we could have true dialogue. For many, this type of technical discussion can dampen the creative thinking process, but it was welcomed. Now I can't wait to walk the halls, streets, paths, and roads of some of our favorite places in the Wheel of Time. So what do we know about season three so far? Well, we know it's gonna cover the plot and events from The Shadow Rising, the fourth Wheel of Time book. So if the book is followed closely, and that means the Battle of the Two Rivers, Rand's trip to Roydeon, and a ton of other Aiel stuff, and then Nynaeve and Elaine's trip to Tanchico. Of that though, I'm fairly sure based on interviews that we're going to be getting the Battle of the Two Rivers and Rand's trip to Roydeon, but I'm unsure yet as to whether we're going to get Tanchico, at least as it was in the story, or if they're going to combine it with a couple other storylines. There's a couple areas there where they might be able to pull some things together just to shorten the story a little bit. We do know that Rafe has said their goal was to use season two to get all of the characters in the right places to a adapt the shadow rising directly for season three. So going back to Sarah's comments, she didn't necessarily give any indication about what would be in the season or even if they were done writing it for that matter. But I think based on the tone of her words, there's a strong likelihood that the writing is complete for season three and they are moving on to preparations for filming, which as we previously mentioned is likely just around the corner. So in a cool story that involves Robert Jordan, but not the wheel of time, 
Harriet McDougall, who's Robert Jordan's widow, and his editor donated roughly a million dollars to the Citadel, the university that Robert Jordan graduated from in 1974. For those of you that are not aware, Robert Jordan served in Vietnam and was a decorated soldier. When he left the military, he enrolled at the Citadel and earned a degree in physics in 1974. The gift that Harriet has given to the Citadel will cover the cost of a new electrical engineering scholarship at the school, as well as a professorship of electrical engineering. Michael Livingston, who is a professor at the Citadel, recently also wrote a story about Robert Jordan's life and some of the behind the scenes information on the Wheel of Time, titled Origins of the Wheel of Time. He actually has Robert Jordan's writing desk in his office at the Citadel, which is really cool. You can check out my review of Michael Livingston's book, Origins of the Wheel of Time, by clicking up here somewhere. I will also have that video linked at the end of this video. So I know many of you may be sick of the constant speculation about when the Wheel of Time season two will come out, but there is now more fuel to that fire as we have some information about the release of the Dragon Reborn audiobook read by Rosamund Pike. Now, for those that are not aware, Rosamund Pike, the actress playing Moraine in the show, has been recording new versions of her performing the audiobooks. Both The Eye of the World and The Great Hunt have already been released, and it was just announced that the audiobook version of the Dragon Reborn will be released on June 6th, 2023. So why the heck does that matter, you might ask? Well... Eye of the World, released on November 16th, 2021, which conspicuously is just a couple days before season one of the Wheel of Time TV show released on November 19th, 2021. So just three days later. So if that's any indication, then we could be looking at a June release this year for season two, which seems to be an open month as Amazon's planned releases goes so far, at least. So does that mean that we're going to see Wheel of Time season two in June? Let me know in the comments of the video what you think. Make sure to also let me know what you think of the rest of the news. And while you're at it, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time news and lore content. I've actually got some really cool lore content coming up. I know it's been a while, but I've been working on some fun ones. That's all I do here on the channel. So uh, subscribe to the channel to be updated when I do more of it. Special thank you to all my patrons who support the channel and the content that I make. If you enjoy the content, consider checking out my Patreon in the description of the video. And if you like this video, check out one of these videos here that you also might like. Thank you for watching and until next time, see you later.